All right, let's say for some reason you want this nice picture of a landscape right here on your Hugo website. And if you've worked with Hugo before, you might have heard that you want your images to be under static images right here. As you can see, I have my test image in here. And in order to access these static files, you would just type in slash images slash test image. That is the location of this inside the static folder. But there is one drawback when it comes to images this way. So if we take a look at how big this image actually is, under the network tab, this is actually 1.5 megabytes, which is pretty big. You probably don't want to be loading 1.5 megabyte images and delivering those to all of your users. That would be very slow, especially if you have a lot of images. And what you can do is you can go over and individually optimize these images. You could export them using an image editor like GIMP or Photoshop, or you can use some program like Image Magic to optimize it a little bit better. But we're using Hugo, and if you have a whole bunch of different images on your website, maybe you have hundreds of blog posts with hundreds of images, it's not really practical to do all of the work yourself. So we're going to use Hugo's built-in image processing to handle all this for us. We're going to optimize all these images so we don't have any 1.5 megabyte images just hanging around on our website. So first things first, let's start with this image on our blog page right here. Let's say we want to have Hugo optimize this for us. So first things first, you want to move it out of your static folder. They cannot be optimized inside your static folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this into a new folder called Assets. You'll want to create this folder in your root directory if you haven't already. And you can put anything inside here. You can put as many directories as you want. But I'm just going to put all my images into this image folder. Let's paste that in there. And now in order to access this image, we're going to use something called Hugo Pipes. And all you need to know about it is we want to get a variable, let's say image. And in order to process this, we want Hugo to retrieve it as a resource. And we can do that by typing resources.git and then just the file name and all the directories. So we would just type images slash test image dot JPEG. Okay. And now we just want to pass this image into the source right here. So let me remove everything inside here and put image. And then we want to get the permalink for it or the URL for it. So we'll do that with rel permalink. And if we've done everything correctly, then we should have this image here, and we do. But unfortunately, we have not optimized it at all. It is still 1.5 megabytes. Take my word for it. But once we have this image retrieved as a resource, we can now process it with Hugo. And we're going to do that by, let's just wrap this with some parentheses. And let's say image.resize. This is the first method I'll show you. So you can resize it to a specific width or height. So let's just say we want it to be 500 pixels across. And you don't even need to put in a height for this. It will just resize it to be a width of 500 and then scale it appropriately so that the height is correct. It'll maintain the aspect ratio is what I'm saying. So let's go back here and see if we have a 500 pixel across image. And we do. It is now only 500 pixels across. And of course, if we check how big it actually is, it's going to be a lot less than 1.5 megabytes. And as you can see, it is only 12 kilobytes, which is very nice. And it still looks nice. There's not any discernible loss of quality here. If you want to specifically put in what quality that you want the image to be, uh, by default, it is quality 75. And you can change this by putting this Q and then a percent right here. And if we want this to be really low quality, we can just put in quality 10 or something awful like that. And as you can see, this just looks horrible, but you can do that if you want to. You can also have it higher than 75, which is the default, but most of the time you aren't really going to see any major difference. I think quality 75 is good enough for most of your needs, but if you really want to mess around with that, you can. Okay, but resize is not the only thing we can do here. So we can also fit this to a specific size and we are going to want to have the width and the height so let's say we want it to fit in a 200 times 200 pixel square we can save that and it is now resized to 200 pixels 
So fit will just basically ensure that this image will not exceed this bounding box that we have set for it, uh, 200 by 200 pixel box. And next up we can also do fill. So if we want this image to be a specific size, let's say we want it to be 1000 pixels across, but only 300 pixels high, then we can save that. As we can see, it now crops off the top and the bottom and leaves us with the correct sizing that we chose. Now if you want to get uh, different parts of the image, then you can specifically tell it what to do. So if you want this to be the center of it, you can type center. So there is the exact center of the image. You can do bottom, you can do top as you would probably expect. You can even do something like top left or bottom left, bottom right, things like that. But by default, if you don't put any other instructions in here, then it will use this library called Smart Crop to automatically determine the best way to crop it. So if you have a face in here or some object that you should be focusing on, this library will automatically crop it to whatever it sees fit. So most of the time, if you just leave this at the default, you'll get a pretty good crop. It'll just be an algorithm deciding what looks best. So if you want more fine grain control, you can add that. And that's basically all the image resizing that I personally use. Now, there are a few other things that you can look on this page for. So I'll leave a link to this in the description. This is the Hugo documentation for image processing. But as you can see, we have resize, fit, fill. And then you can even add more things like, let's say you want to add a blur or you want to pixelate your image. You can do that. You can also, let's see, add a background color. If you're converting a transparent image, you can rotate it. You can do a whole bunch of stuff, but honestly what I showed you is what you're going to use it for most of the time. And so we should be pretty happy with this. We now have a nice optimized image that will only be maybe 30 or 40 kilobytes instead of megabytes large. And we can crop it or resize it to our heart's content. So that's pretty useful if you just have a single image right here. But you might be wondering how to get this inside your markdown or maybe you want to have a featured image in your post and you want to know how to optimize that image. Well, let me show you how to do that as well. So first off, let's go to our post specifically. It's called a test post. And we just have a normal markdown post right here, but let's add a featured image right here. So you can call this field whatever you want, but I'm just calling it featured image. And inside our assets folder, we'll just grab the same image, this test image.jpg right here. And let's save this. And now nothing is going to happen until we update our single page right here. So get the single layout for your blog post. And if you want to learn more about theming in Hugo and what all the layouts and everything are, I have a whole nother video on that if you want to check it out. But we already have some code here doing what we want for this. So basically what this is doing is this is getting the resource. That's the same as I explained before. And then we're passing in the params.featured image. So this will get from the markdown, it will get this field featured image. So basically it's pasting in test image.jpg here. And then it's concatenating that on the end of this images. So basically this printf statement will evaluate to images slash test image.jpg right here. And then this with image right here, this is basically like an if statement. So if there is an image found in the featured image right here, then and only then we will want to display an image right here. And we're just getting the rel permalink right here. But of course, I can just add in the same filter that I did in the previous page. So let's say image dot resize and have this be, let's say a max width of 1000 pixels. Save that. And we now have a 1000 pixel wide image right here. And so now if you want to add a new featured image, it would be as simple as putting it in the images directory here. I mean, of course, if you want to, you could add another subfolder inside here called thumbnails or something like that. And then you would just change this. So it's under images slash thumbnails, just point it to wherever your image is located. But you would just put this then inside your single for your blog post, and it will now display your featured image correctly. And finally, let's cover one last use case. So we do have a featured image in here. But let's say that we wanted to add an image inline inside this markdown right here. And we can do that using short codes. 
So let me show you the short code that I have built already. So short codes are going to be under layouts right here. You're going to want to create a separate folder called short codes. And these are going to be little snippets that you can insert inside of your markdown, just so you don't have to put HTML in here or something like that. You can just put in a quick short code and then keep your markdown looking nice. You don't have to mix it up with HTML and all this. So let's open up our short code and let's name it image.html. And first, let me show you how we're going to use this right here. So you would insert a short code into your markdown like so. You have the curly braces right here. And then we're going to want to have angle brackets like an HTML element, but put some spaces around this. And then we're going to want to write the name of the short code. This is going to be the same name as we have in our layouts folder right here, this image.html. And we can pass in whatever value we want here, but I have it set to source. So we want to get the source from the images. Let's say images slash another test image.jpg. Save that. And so what's, what that's going to do inside your short code, right here, we're just getting the image from the source. This is going to be the source field that you pass to this image right here. As you can see, we're passing this source field right here, and this is picking it up. So we're doing the same thing. We're putting this into a variable, and then we're resizing this to 300 pixels wide. Now you can change this to whatever you want. Let's say we want this to be 500 pixels wide. And if you wanted the short code to be a little bit more complicated, I'm sure you could pass in what specific dimensions you want it to be. You could pass in if you want it to resize or fill or fit. But I'm just going to show you a very basic short code example here. So we're just resizing every image that we pass to a short code to 500 pixels wide. And as we can see, this is now 500 pixels wide. That has been processed with Hugo. And then finally, we're also just getting the alt field. So if you want to add an alt description to this, then you can as well. You would just pass this via alt. Let's say trees and birds. Save that. And now it's being passed here. As you can see, if we pop this open, it's going to have the alt tag trees and birds, which is good for accessibility. And so I'm just saying, if we have the field alt, then pass it in here. Otherwise, let's leave alt blank. That's how you're going to have Hugo automatically resize and optimize all your images. It's very handy for when you want to upload a whole bunch of images and still have them load quickly without going through and manually optimizing every single image yourself. That can be very time consuming. So I'll recommend doing this for all of your Hugo sites, especially ones that are more image intensive. So now you have the knowledge. Stop making your visitors go through and download huge images when they don't actually need to.